so I'm working on this teeter-totter here and what I need to do is I've got these caps to go over top of uh, the hardware and you've probably seen that you know you got your kids going up and down and you know any you know kind of hex head bolt or like that's covered with this this cap now these caps come in various you know heights um, they come in various colors perhaps materials so I want to be able to track that and maintain that fairly easily so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna generate a block so from the insert panel, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a block. Now blocks and AutoCAD, I mean, blocks are, you know, essentially older than, than dirt. They've been around for, for you know, essentially forever. Um, and the processes remain fairly consistent. You specify a name. So I'm going to call this the cap. I'm going to pick the insertion point, which I know is the center of the circle. And I'm going to select the objects. So in this case, there's two circles. So I'm going to select it as the objects. Now, in this instance, I do want to convert these existing circles to a block because I want to start using it. But notice that I can create the block and delete it. I can also create the, create the block, but keep these as the individual objects. Now, in this case, I do want to scale this uniformly because I always want it to stay as a circle. But you do have the option with blocks to scale differently in the X and Y direction. So it gives you a chance to kind of stretch it instead of just scaling it. I am going to allow exploding in case I ever need to you know, explode an instance to make some tweaks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click OK. And what it's done now is notice that it's converted this into a block. And if I go and take a look at the properties, is I can see that this property has a name and we can see that it's, it's the cap. Now I'm going to undo that. Because what I want to do is I want to include some attributes. So you can see that right on, again, the Insert tab, I'm going to pick Define Attribute. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, call one the, the type. The prompt is going to be, you know, cap type, the question mark. And the default is going to be standard. Now, in this case, you know, justification is we want this to be middle. It's essentially the same as, as text. I'm not going to have a rotation and I'm going to lock that into position because I don't want to have the ability to move this independently of the block. The insertion point I'm going to specify on the screen after it prompts me and I'm going to click OK and I'm going to pick a point. So I'm going to pick the center of that cap. Now perhaps that's a bit big and it behaves you know, very similar to text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in there and I'm going to change the, the height of it. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the text height to be 100 millimeters instead. So we can see that that's updated and I'm, I'm a little bit happier with that height. Okay, let's define another attribute. And what I'm gonna do in this case is we're gonna call this the color. The prompt will be the color and the default's gonna be black. Now in this case, I don't actually want this to be visible within the drawing. I want to you know, keep that information. I want that information to be there in the background, um, but I don't need to, to see it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go invisible. What we're going to do the justification again will be will be middle just like the other one, and I'm going to align that below the previous attribute definition. So we'll click OK, and we can see that the color goes in there at the same height. Now I can see that right now, but it's once I convert that into the block. Now I could keep going. Maybe I want material. Maybe I want description. Maybe I want you know a part number. You know, I want the cost. It's really the sky's the limit what I can do with these attributes. These are the two that I need in this instance. So let's go through that create block process again. So what we want is we want this to be the cap like we did. Center point is going to be the center of that block. And I'm going to select the two circles and the two attributes in this, this case. Okay, so I've got the details that I need. I've got the objects. I've got the attributes. I'm going to click OK. And notice instantly it comes in here and says, okay, what's the color? What's the cap type? So we'll click OK. And now we can see that that first one was inserted. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and, and, and I'm going to use the copy command. And let's take a copy of this and let's put this on top of each, each hole here. So what I'm going to do is just pick around a couple places. And I'm going to start there. So I can see that I've got the the ones inserted. Now looking at this, I realized that these two actually need to be the tall types. I don't need the standard. So I'm just gonna double click on it and I'm gonna change the cap type here to tall. 
and we'll click OK. And then we'll double click on this one and we'll do the same thing. So the value here is going to be tall. And I'll click OK to update that. I'm also looking at this going, well, that's not quite how that should look either. And with blocks, it doesn't matter which one I modify because it's, it's an instance. It's a copy of the definition and they're all linked. So I'm just going to right click on this one and I'm going to use the edit block in place. It's the cap I want to want to modify. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple lines. So let's add a line from the quadrant to the quadrant. Let's actually use object snaps to make it a little bit easier here. Or my running object snaps. And I've also decided that I don't want to see this attribute anymore is I still want that attribute to be there. I just don't want it to be visible. So let's change the invisible and we'll set this to, to yes. Okay, so I'm happy with the changes. I've added that line, I've made that invisible. So what we'll do is we'll save our changes. Just telling me that it's, it's, it's saved. It's a chance to cancel out if you didn't want to. And we can see that it updated in geometry, but notice that those attributes didn't update. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a synchronization, ATT sync, because what I wanna do is I wanna essentially force an update on that. And the one that I wanna force is this instance. So what I wanna do is I want all instances to update. And by synchronization is that I want the attributes to, to update. So, you know, which attributes are included, you know, the, the properties of those attributes. And we can see that that's been updated, not with just these two instances, but every instance within the drawing. So you can see with blocks how you can you know, group these objects, you can specify some smart information, you know, some, some metadata that you can change. And then as you change that instance, it updates throughout the drawing. So that's blocks and attributes within AutoCAD.